Hello, I would like to first introduce myself. I am Dr. Jayaprakash Suntiwari and I've been working as an internist in Mission Hospital for the last 28 years. Welcome everyone. I would like to give a brief talk on high blood pressure, which is a very common disorder in today's age with a lot of stress and people don't seem to have time to relax. This is one of the most important and relevant problems that we face in today's world. So I'll just give a brief talk on this so that uh, most people would get a brief outline as to what it is and how are we going to deal with it and what are the long-term implications of this disease. So basically uh, a good question would be most people would ask me what is high blood pressure. High blood pressure basically means uh, the blood pressure in the arteries is persistently high. Uh, so what is the number that we are talking about? Mostly in today's age, anything that is above 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury is considered high blood pressure. Okay, but again, this will depend on age because some studies say that after the age of 60 to 80, even if your blood pressure is 150 to 90, some studies accept that as okay, you know, that's the target uh, number that we want but in uh, most young people normally we the cutoff would be about 140 to 90 so that is uh, what we say as a high blood uh, person has a high blood pressure okay then uh, what are the uh, symptoms like if a person comes uh, do you know you have high blood pressure they say it is a silent killer meaning to say that there may be no symptoms whatsoever and it is more an incidental finding the person comes uh, the patient comes to treat something else and then when they measure his blood pressure they find it's very high or they come for a screening to do a blood uh, you know a health checkup and they find that their blood pressure is very high so what do we do do we start treating the patient immediately no that's not the way because uh, there is something known as uh, white coat hypertension it means a person comes in he sees the doctor and he gets nervous which is uh, quite a normal natural thing human nature so normally what we do before we confirm that a person has high blood pressure is we check his blood pressure at least twice you know after a gap of 5-10 minutes and we repeat the blood pressure and we see and normally we do it in two different clinical settings means you come today we check your blood, blood pressure once it's high you rest you relax if you want to use the restroom you go relieve yourself you come back we take another record if it is again high, we don't say, oh, you have high blood pressure, we start treating, you know. We say, okay, we give you an appointment, come one week later, and then we repeat the same thing. So basically, two uh, recordings in, uh, at two different clinical meetings. Uh, and then we see, and uh, the best and the more ac most accurate way to say, uh, you know, with conviction that you have high blood pressure is what we have today we call ambulatory blood pressure monitoring means they put uh, these uh, instrument the equipment on you and they observe for 12 to 24 hours if it remains consistently high that means yes you have blood high blood pressure then a lot of people would ask how do we get the equipment and all well there's another way which is as good but not better is to if you have a blood pressure monitoring instrument at home you measure yourself get about 5-10 readings in a span of a week or 10 days and then you get those readings because that is more reliable than measuring it in the hospital because as I said you may be nervous you've just walked up a fl flight of stairs your blood pressure can go up so we sort of we make sure that it is a definite and accurate diagnosis before we start treatment okay then another thing would be what if I don't treat my blood pressure I have no symptoms, why should I treat? Well, they say it's a major risk factor for many diseases. If you don't treat your blood pressure, you could have a heart attack, you may have a stroke, you may have heart failure, your heart may have a very arrhythmias, means uh, it moves, goes very fast, you may have peripheral artery disease, your kidneys could be affected, you may have vision loss with time, and with time as you age, early dementia. So to prevent all this, they say you should, the moment it's high and you sure that it is definitely high, we start treatment. Because uh, if we don't treat, these are the complications that can come up. 
and it, they say that uh, in these journals that it reduces your life expectancy by 10 years if you don't treat it. So as I said 90 to 95 percent of patients will not have any symptoms. Again uh, blood pressure we would uh, classify it as two primary cause and secondary cause. The primary cause is more genetic or environmental factors we don't know the reason and uh, uh, one of the risk many risk factors can that can cause this could be like you are taking excess salt in your diet or you have excess body weight or you smoke cigarettes or you drink a lot of alcohol these are things that can cause your blood pressure to go up and normally we see it in people as you age it becomes higher and then the other one is the secondary cause where it is identifiable we know the reason that we see in about 5 to 10 percent of patients and we see them in patients who are young like pre-adolescent or early adolescent and there is a reason for that normally the most common is you have a kidney problem could be the arteries of the kidneys have been narrowed and that causes a high blood pressure to you know your blood pressure to go up or there could be endocrine diseases like uh, if you have uh, few uh, you know uh, what we say uh, Cushing's disease or you may have uh, um, hyperthyroid or hypothyroid so when these are the causes in young what we call hypertension in the young we normally try to identify a cause because if we get the cause the treatment is easy you know we treat that and your blood pressure comes down to normal but as I said 90% to 95 is like primary we don't know the reason okay normally the range we like to keep is between 100 to 130 millimeters of mercury for the systolic and the diastolic would be between 60 to 80 but not above 90 okay having said that now I would just give you a brief outline don't want to go in too much into theory but something that's more practical on a day-to-day -day basis some people say when do you uh, a person comes with high blood pressure do you have to reduce the blood pressure immediately at that sitting itself or do you wait for it to come down slowly well uh, there is something known as hypertensive crisis which again we divide into urgency and emergency what is the difference urgency means the blood pressure is like 180 by 110 and up in that case yes it is hypertensive uh, crisis but if there's no end organ damage end organ damage means the patient is not confused there's no visual disturbances he's not breathless he doesn't have a heart attack or a pain in the chest that's called uh, hypertensive urgency so we start him on blood pressure medication and we slowly reduce it in the next 24 to 48 hours basically he has no end organ damage but hypertensive emergency somebody who has a high blood pressure and there is an end organ damage like as I was saying he's confused he has chest pain he's a bit uh, delirious then we need to reduce the blood pressure but we need, need to reduce it fast so there's no end organ damage or ongoing end organ damage okay so having said that I just mentioned about how do you diagnose as I said take the blood pressure do the ambulatory monitoring the white coat hypertension which I just talked about then the next step what's the next step a lot of people come in with no symptoms and then the doctor prescribes a quite a number of tests then you are still like a bit doubtful as to why but as I said we are trying to identify the cause so normally we do a battery of uh, blood tests we check your kidneys we check for your sugar we check your lipid profile we check your electrolytes because like Cohn's disease is a kind of high blood pressure where the sodium where the potassium is low so we check for that we check for hyperthyroid if you have high that could be one of the causes then the next thing is we check the urine to see if there are proteins it could it be a kidney problem and we check the x-rays and the electrocardiogram just to see if your heart is not enlarged or you know there is a strain pattern on the electrocardiogram basically it means the high blood pressure can cause uh, an abnormal rhythm in the electrocardiogram so these are some of the basic tests which we do in any patient who comes so we recommend somebody who has high blood pressure is not aware to come and do all these tests and do a regular follow-up okay the treatment as far as treatment goes <clears throat> the first step before we start medication is lifestyle modification that is easy and they say <clears throat> if you can control that it's basically like giving one 
kind of high blood pressure medication if it comes down. So what are these lifestyle changes that we recommend? First of all is uh, uh, reduce your weight if you have excess weight. How, and basically we talk about what is known as basic metabolic in the basic ma uh, mass index, body mass index, sorry, where you keep the BMI between 20 to 25 kilograms per square meter. And you forget that what we do is uh, make sure that you are not overweight. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, one is to, uh, you know, do physical exercises on a regular basis, try and lose your weight. Uh, if you're smoking, you cut down on smoking and slowly give it up. Alcohol, social drinking, but try and not drink too much. And uh, diet control, maybe you have more fruits and vegetables. So these are the lifestyle modification. If you can do that, they say it's like you may not need to go on medication once we get it under control. So that's the first step. And, and I think everyone needs to do it. Whether you need to be on medication, even if you are on medication, you need to do it concurrently. Means you do the lifestyle modification and you even take the medication so that uh, we give the least amount of medication to control the blood pressure. So once we do that, you are in safe hands, you will have a good quality of life, your life expectancy will be good and uh, there won't be any complications along the way. Okay. Uh, having said that, now there, is, uh, there are a group of patients who have what we call resistant hypertension. What does that mean? That means uh, we give at least three, more than three medications to control the blood pressure, but it's still, we are still unable to control that. Uh, that means he's got resistant hypertension. But again, having said that, most people who have that are people who are not compliant with their medication. Means we give them the medication, but they forget to take it or they're too busy or out of three, they're taking only one or two. Maybe they forgot the medicine at home or in their office. Well, we understand that, but I think one needs to be very compliant to get the best results. So that is called resistant. And what is the reason for that? They say the autonomic system of your body could be you know, that could be one of the reasons which we use the term neurogenic hypertension. But okay, having said that, I think this is one of the main reasons where you need to be on medication and control this resistant hypertension. Well, uh, I've given you a basic outline of all these things uh, just to make the lay person or the general population aware. Number one, which I may have not mentioned is that most people who have high blood pressure they don't know they have blood pressure, high blood pressure. So they are not basically on medication because they don't know. The major part of the world, they say about 20, 22% uh, of the world population have high blood pressure, but they don't know they have it. And even that, once they know, when we treat them, 50% uh, we are able to control the high blood pressure. So it's not just knowing that you have it. Another thing is to be on medication and number three is to even after being on medication, you must make sure that it's under good control. Just being on medication and if it's we don't get the target but blood pressure uh, goal that we are looking on, on is still, uh, you know, there is some risk involved. So what has uh, the World Health Organization done about this? Because they do know that most people don't know they have high blood pressure. They've started having these uh, world high, they call it the World Hypertension League, where many nations come together. They do a lot of, you know, uh, public awareness campaigns where by the internet or the television, try and tell people to, you know, get a checkup, check your blood pressure so that you are aware that you have high blood pressure uh, and you go on for treatment and you are able to reduce because uh, this has a lot of uh, economic implications because uh, if you prevent it and you treat it, the chances of having complications would be less. As a result, hospitalization will be less, uh, economic losses would be less, and uh, you lead a better quality of life. So the World Health Organization has said that 17th of May of every year is the World Hypertension Day. So I think... Uh, just giving you a brief outline and uh, if there are any questions uh, that you have in mind feel free to ask me whenever you are free or whenever you do come for a health checkup in Mission Hospital we always encourage you to ask if you have any doubts or you would like to like us to help you in any way we are looking forward to whatever we can do to help you. 
Okay, so nice to uh, have this talk and I expect a lot of uh, people to ask me questions about this. Looking forward to you. Thank you.